Well, guys, we're back on Pico OS. Now, there's not a lot of information about this out there, but I figured I'd try to get it all into one video. Uh, let me just open up Vengord. So for you guys, I asked the main questions for Pico OS that I think need to be asked. How many packages were updated in total? And uh, all packages are built from scratch using a mix of Debian, SID, and Experimental alongside Debian Multimedia. That's ABI standardized and frozen until the next time everything passes testing. So uh, to explain the testing, I would kind of have to show you, but I'll try. So working system, working GNOME GTK, working KDE QT, all Pico OS meta packages, working vert manager, and more tests will be added as the distro grows. And basically that's, uh, this ensures the obsolete latest of everything made by the Debian maintainers. So even though he said, even so sometimes that isn't enough. So the distro has over 200 plus custom made handmade packages. Uh, it goes even beyond Debian. That includes NVIDIA drivers, firmware, Pipewire, Mesa, XDG, Steam, Lutris, uh, RockM, one API and so on. And of course, there's a, and we're gonna talk about the kernel next because the kernel is super important. So the kernel in Cache OS has all the optimizations in Cache OS and AVX2, LTO, and everything you can possibly imagine. And it also has the ability to change schedulers too. So you can see it's running four right there. Uh, what does this button do? Browse for selected branches. Let's see what we got at our hand, see? So we got the 10, the 10.5, the 10.7, the RC5, and the RC6. Currently, I am here, and I plan on staying here. Uh, but again, 6.10.7 is available for those who don't want to use it, all right? And currently doesn't support. Okay, so I don't have that actually on and started. I should probably... Uh, let me just system CTL that on enable S uh, C X. And then we can do status S C X, which it's loaded and now it's enabled. Okay. So I'm going to just restart this and see if that lets us change schedulers. Now it does not. And I believe it doesn't because we're on the 6.11, of course because, well, again, it's release candidate six. So the second question was why they went from Debian and ditched Ubuntu, because that's an important one. I remember as I am part of their team, I built the Discord, I'm in their channels. They had a lot of issues with Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a disaster uh, and honestly, not very good to work with or to use at all lately. So the move from Ubuntu to Debian is a welcome one, honestly. I'm not a fan of Debian, but this has made me a fan of Debian. This this Debian is a hundred times better than normal Debian. Yeah, I said it. And once again, this is my personal opinion, duh. All right, so Ubuntu is actively hiding snap packages as devs, making it a chore to constantly have to revert and maintain that revert. And since pop and mint are on the LTS, it's way easier for them. But LTS isn't really up to date, which again, what most people don't know, stable is not stable. It's a fixed point with a fixed amount of bugs, the least amount of bugs possible, but still bugs nonetheless. So if you're not constantly updating packages to the newest and fixing those bugs, when something major happens, the distro maintainers can blame everybody else except for themselves for being stuck in that state for so long. So the way that I see it is this constantly being as up to date as possible while also maintaining stability, like real stability, not that fake ass old package stability is a huge step forward for anything Debian period. Now, again, LTS also being a fork brings in some problems. And since we got to rebuild everything for applying LTO and AVX to ops, 
why not go with a more updated base, which is Debian? Uh, he's got a point there. What has done the kernel to optimize it? Well, he says, we usually use the Cache OS kernel for Pika with their optimizations. If there's a cool patch for ROG Linux or Nabora, we also fetch that. So basically they're grabbing the best of Nabora and the best of Cache and they're mingling it together to make the best of everything. And that's awesome. Another thing that I've asked is, will you be keeping Pico OS 4 up to date with Arch or close to it? It depends on how well the Debian maintainers, well, how they do things and Pico OS maintainers are doing their job, but that's what they want. They want to basically, you know, have the most updated thing possible well, again maintaining stability and the last question that i asked them is will you have more than one kernel like cache os and as you saw if we do this again they'll only have the latest kernel and the latest rc kernel because i went and asked ferrero uh that's what i'm calling him deal with it he says no other kernels just the latest and whatever RC is out. They all do sketch enabled. So there is 10 schedules to choose from via the Pika kernel manager if the user is not happy with Boar. Uh, Boar is ridiculously overpowered, by the way. I got to use it a while back while doing some emulation and it actually beat out EEV something or other, that one that I always used on Cache OS. So that was actually really surprising. Uh, to do so again we have a kernel manager okay and we do have a package manager I just can never find it for the life of me unless it's too late but I will open up this this is the driver manager okay uh, people were surprised that things like these still do exist and APX is stuff I, I'm not really interested in it at all uh, the less closed down a system the better for me so here's the package manager. Again, it's just simp, uh, synaptic package manager, which is completely fine. Uh, does this thing have like, you know, a dark mode so I can like fit it in with everything else? It probably does, but I just don't know how to enable it. And yeah, uh, I believe there's right. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. I just have to remember how to do it. Uh, no, 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 no. So I jumped on here and I was doing some stuff and I got to compile this with Cosmic, the one of the main developers. This is the Pika update manager. So it's got flat pack updates and it's got normal updates. So again, uh, yeah, there's three things that need to be updated. So we're going to commit an upgrade right now. This one on the top is probably because Firefox was crashing last night. So we're going to just do that real quick. And it does not work. Permission denied. Which doesn't make much sense. FN override failed. It is what it is. And again, this is completely something that is a work in progress. So uh, give that time to bake a cook because they have to code it. They're not actually cooking things. Coding and cooking are two different very things, you know, because you're not eating what you code. So let's hit clear. And I'm going to just do sudo apt update. And then I'm going to do 7.7 seven. <laughs> and sudo apt upgrade like that. And I find this works the best, honestly, for me allows me to get everything done and because i have some uh, i have this open that was causing an issue but there you go so hopefully that now fixes the package manager the one that we just had open so it works does it have an icon now welcome to pico os software and updates is this what you are is this what you are it's not going to tell me is it yeah so let's open that up and take a look at that now oh yeah I mean, it's still pretty cool. I like it nonetheless. If I commit the upgrade. Yeah. Okay, good. So it seems to be doing okay a little bit better now. I want to do a video where I just primarily game 
like I do normally for when a driver update comes out. If you're okay with that, just hit the like button. Let me know, comment, do anything. This is just more of an information video showing off other parts of Pico OS 4 and giving you a lot of information, I guess. If you have any questions, uh, write it in the comments. Basically say question, okay? And then the two little dots and then ask your question. I found out I can filter questions and that makes it easy for me. So if you have anything you want to ask the developer, let me know and I'll do a follow-up video. But for now, I think this will do it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Do not forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. And yeah, we're not going to be playing Star Wars Outlaws until it's fixed because it is buggy. So it wasn't Pico S's fault. Uh, it wasn't Nobora's fault. The game just crashes and is buggy on Windows. I tried it on my laptop and it's just, it's not very good. So... I'm going to find something else to do for stream tonight. Bye.